Hi Trez Runners, it's Sammy Jane Nye here. My friends call me Hammy Sammy. I am based over in the UK, the North East, and I'd like to say this opportunity to thank Richard, um, as you know him, Ponguru, um, for letting me do an intro. He's trying to help me out. Um, I do have my own channel, which is called Hammy Sammy, so if you want to know how us women do it in the field, then pop over to my channel and see what treasures I've uncovered. Thank you. Bye. Now I always forget to say this, but if you have a detecting channel and you're making videos on a regular basis and you would like your channel to be featured on one of my videos, just do me an intro like you've seen in the last three or four videos that I've done. Just upload it to your channel, send me the link and I'll add it to the list of videos that I've got to be added into the starts of my videos. It really does help with your views and subscribers. You don't have to mention me in the video. Just do an advert for your channel. Anything between 30 and 40 seconds generally works well. It doesn't matter how professional it is. Some of them are really polished, some aren't. It doesn't matter. All it is is an advert for your channel. And I'm happy to put those on because I would like to see people who are putting good content out there featured and promoted and just give viewers an idea of the broader picture of metal detecting because all too often all the featured videos are of people grave robbing and just being thoroughly horrible with fake competitions and all sorts of things just to garner more views. I'd like to push the good channels run by honest people who regularly go detecting and make videos. So it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in, if you want your channel featured, just send me a video anytime. Hello there, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna go on another hunt today. Probably has only got about two and a half to three hours to make this hunt, so it's fairly nearby. And it's in a field where there used to be a fair or a fete every year or every other year since the 60s, I think. So. There's a lot of coins and there's a lot of trash. I've done the area quite a few times with both the E-Track and the Deus, but I'm going to take quite a measured approach this time. I'm going to start working backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards in quite a regular slow fashion with the E-Track 18 inch coil getting way down there and try and pull up some deep old coins. That's looking good, first signal of the day. And it's a penny in remarkable condition from 1936. So that's George V. A little bit scabby on that side. But that side's really good condition. Now this one was reading 1238, but it was jumping around a little bit and it looks like a coin ball. Certainly something in there. Hopefully it's not a modern penny. It's very small, whatever it is. Oh man. A modern half pence. Hapney. First of many, I presume. Here's one from about, ooh, maybe it's eight, nine inches down. Yeah, it's canny depth and this is, looks like a coin ball and it's a modern penny god modern penny from that depth give a cracking signal here's a fairly deep one give a good signal it looks like I was going to say it looks like an old penny and it actually looks like a cartwheel penny it's very bent considering how thick it is but that looks very much like a cartwheel penny and I'm just judging that by the ridge around the outside and the thickness of this particular coin 
So that's the period I want to be into because that would be 1797. I don't think it's got much detail on it. You just see a B there. You just just about see a B there. But it's, it's pretty much knackered, unfortunately. Now this signal was good enough to dig, but it was bouncing around a lot on the right hand side of the screen. But there's a big lump of coke here. So possibly that was skewing the results of it. I just hope it isn't another little hapenny. That's an excellent condition, that one. That's an Elizabeth II half penny or hapenny from 1963. I'm absolutely loving this new spade. So strong, I'm not in any danger of knacking this. And I'll explain where I got it from in a minute, but this looks like a little coin ball. Oh, shut up, man. It's amazing the way these little coin balls come up. And this was a, another bouncy signal. Ah, it's a little threat me bit. Brass threat me bit. Reasonable depth, seven or eight inches. As regular viewers know, uh, I've got a habit of digging quite deep and smashing a lot of spades. So I've bought a new one. This one is hopefully going to be an unbreakable spade. Should have really cleaned it before showing you this. <laughs> but I'm actually filming this after I've been on the hunt. It was a little bit windy on the hunt, so I couldn't really explain it when I was up there. But this is a stainless steel spade with a D-handle. So I can kind of drag it along behind us. Got a point on, it's sharp as well. You could practically cut steak with that. And it's also got teeth on the side. And that helps it punch through turf and also helps it to slice up very fine roots as well. And I did go through a few roots and it just went through no problem at all. It's shipping grade stainless steel spade so it's extremely strong. And it's got a couple of little lugs welded on there. One, two. And that's for a rope so you can, you can strap it on your back. I actually took the rope off because I found it a bit of a bind taking it off and putting it back on, taking it off because I have a harness when I'm using the e-track. I also took the camera into that harness plus I had a belt on and, and taking it on and off was just a bit of a faff so I took it off and just dragged it along behind me. It was no problem at all. When I was digging it was absolutely excellent compared to the spades I've had. It's got a nice wide pad there for your feet. And because it was quite dry, I was just out with my trainers. And if I tried to use my trainers on my normal spades, it would have just cut straight through the bottom of them. This was no problem at all. It just went straight in, all the way down. Most of the holes I dug were kind of that deep. So I was going one, two, three, and then just levering it up, no problem at all. When the wind dies down and I get a chance to go out detecting again, I'll get a video of this in action because it's absolutely excellent. It just absolutely hammers through the bugger. Aye, right, that point's sharp. It absolutely hammers through it, it hammers through the ground. And it's really well made. It's by King Digger. It's actually made in England, so I'm quite proud to buy British because I didn't think we actually made anything. This proves Britain still does make something, and it makes it well. I've bought a few other things from the same place, so in future videos I'll just talk you through the different things that I've been buying. I've never really had anywhere to put my probe, so I've always just had it in my pocket. I've used my pockets for the finds and also all the rubbish, so it's knackered numerous coats. I'm actually buying some decent gear now, so I'm going to share with you what I've been buying, and also put a link in the video description. One thing I was worried about, because this has got an angled blade, I was worried about all the heavy muck sticking in here. But that wasn't a problem. It just seemed to fall off. Obviously I've still got some crap stuck on there, but it, uh, it came out pretty clean. So I'm very pleased with this, indeed. 
It's a spade that I'm not going to be able to break and that makes me happy. Well it was halfway to China this one, about nine inches or so and we've got a tiny little coin ball there. Oh my god, it's another modern hapenny. Don't believe these little fellas. What a cracking signal that gave and it had to be at least eight to nine inches deep. This wasn't very deep but it was reading in the top right hand quarter of the screen on the e-track. Looks like a coin ball. It is a coin ball. I think it's, yeah, it's a modern one pence. Again. Here's another old penny. Who's this one? Uh, Edward the Seventh. So that's an early 1900s one. Oh, uh, what's that? 1903 perhaps? Yeah, 1903. And that was approximately oh, eight, nine inches again. Gave a good signal. 12.39 on the E-Track. Reading pretty solidly both ways. I've just been digging absolute rubbish. Hapenies and you know, all manner of bottle caps and everything. And that's the first pre-decimal coin I've had for ages. It's another Edward the Seventh, and that one's a halfpenny, half penny. Ooh, the date's very worn. It's 19 oh 1904, I think. And in the end of this big cork, we've got something here. Probably. Oh, hey up, hey up. I can see you. Get in there. Get in. I was beginning to worry that there wasn't going to be any silver. And then there it is. Little George the Sixth Sixpence from 1926. Excellent. Get in there. Get in. And that was... Ooh maybe six inches down and it still gave a cracking signal so I'm very pleased with that indeed it's a canny signal at oh, about eight inches or so now this looks like a crushed ring of some sort and this little thing fell out of it I don't know what that is A little plasticky thing, it's almost like a little clock or something, I don't know, like a clock face. And I don't think this is gold, unfortunately. Yeah, it's definitely not gold. It's just like a little costume ring of some sort. Possibly like a, a religious thing, I'm not sure. Certainly not gold though. Unfortunately, it's way too light. But that gave a hell of a signal, and it was way down there in the hole. Better than out, and if in doubt, dig it out. Ah, it's fairly windy now, it's going to cock this blooming filming up. But here's another coin ball. Possibly a little penny. Ah. Yep, modern penny. Now here's the one reading 12.45. And it's, it isn't English. One franc, so it must be a, a French one. And by the looks of that, I don't think it's silver. I think it's one of them alloys that they were using. Not sure. The tarnish on it just doesn't look right for it being silver, but you never know. I'll have to look that one up. That's a 1944 one franc. This is the finds pouch I bought, it's full of rubbish and also some good stuff. I'll give you a review of this in a future video, it uh, seems to be going well and it's very well made. But I'm going to show you what I found now. I'm going to show you the good and the bad. I normally only show you the good, but the bad is quite interesting. Now a lot of the time in detecting videos, when I see people showing the viewers what they found, there's a lot of foil, iron, a lot of rusty rubbish. I tend not to find that with the e-track. I can kind of recognise iron very well. But that doesn't mean to say that I dig good stuff all the time. 
as you can see, there's quite a lot of rubbish. <laughs> Two aluminium tent pegs, which give a good signal, similar to an old penny. Got to dig them. Uh, some lead, which gives the same signal as a deep silver coin. Got to dig it. Oh. My wife's going to kill me because my top's all hacky now. An absolute nation of bottle tops and the occasional ring pull. Now those bottle tops give the same signal as most silver coins and a half penny or an old penny. So I've got to dig them. I'll show you what iron I've dug. Three bits of rusty iron. They were down about 10-11 inches. And I always dig the tricky, bouncy signals because it might be a deep coin. So three lumps of iron, and oh god, 40 or 50 bottle tops, and a few associated bits of lead and so on. I didn't video all of these coins being dug up because it was very windy, and I don't like getting a lot of wind noise in my videos because it just, it makes them sound awful. I mean, I, I can't watch them with loads of wind noise, and I don't expect other people to watch them either. Right then, this is what we've got. We've got a, a really cheap manky ring of some sort. Probably a kid's ring. A little button. A little military button. I think that one's uh, Royal Artillery because it's got three cannons on it. Threepenny bit, threepenny bit. Cartwheel penny, 1797. Old. Modern penny, modern penny, modern penny, threepenny bit. Modern penny, 20 pence. Modern pennies, modern pennies, modern pennies, a pound coin. Hapneys, these little buggers, these give a really good signal. I've dug these down about 10 or 11 inches. You know, and when people say using the big coil on the E-Track makes you lose sensitivity of small objects at depth, it's just nonsense. Look at that, tiny little wafer thin bit of copper. And it gives a cracking signal. 10 pence, uh, pre-decimal penny, pre-decimal penny, half pence, penny, pound coin, penny, penny, pre-decimal halfpenny, penny, a one franc piece, which is just an alloy, unfortunately, halfpenny, penny, pound coin, uh, what's that, 10 pence, Pound coin, halfpenny, 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 and one silver coin, which makes it all worthwhile. You know, it's nice finding all that stuff, but when you've got something you can actually put in a collection, it makes it all worthwhile. And that's a pretty good example of a 1926 King George V sixpence. There, you can even see his hairs. It's hardly worn at all, that one. It's in excellent condition. So how many coins was there in about two and three quarter hours? Thirty-six coins in total. That's not bad. That's pretty good. I'm pleased with that. It was a coin shooting expedition though. I knew there was loads of coins there because I've bashed it before. But it's just nice to know that there's still stuff there to find. Some of it was quite tricky. But, there's still stuff there, and I really liked finding this fella, the cartwheel penny. You know, that's over 200 years old, and it's obviously been hit by something because it's in a hell of a state, but that's an ounce of copper. That was way down and it gave a really good signal. And it's the Georgian stuff that I want to find. I found a couple of Georgian coins the last time I was up there, but they seem to be quite elusive. And I want to find more of them, so I'll no doubt be going back up there. I'm hoping to get out tomorrow with Jimmy the Horse on a new site. So if I do, I'll video it, and I shall put it up for your viewing pleasure. Thanks very much for watching. It's going to have to be a silent one, this, because of the wind, like it's terrible. I'll just edit it out. Ready? Right. Yeah, Georgie Porgy, looks like it. Well, well, knackered. Aye. 
Excellent. Get in there. Get in. And I'll explain what it is. Yep! Oven's beeping, is it? Can you just put those scampy things in and set it for 20 minutes, please? Thank you. It's tea sorted. Better than out, and if in doubt, dig it out. Those coins, and a couple more that I've dropped there. Ah, I've lost one of the coins. You don't know anybody with a metal detector, do you? Get in there. Kiss the ring, man. Indeed.